Meet the 2023 SeaDoo Explorer Pro 170. Another new niche in the jet ski market established by the world's biggest personal watercraft manufacturer. In this video, we will go through prices, unique features, fuel consumption, what it's like to ride, and cover the pros and cons. The SeaDo Explorer Pro 170 is a new model for 2023 and establishes a new segment in the personal watercraft market. Based on the extended platform developed for the SeaDo Fish Pro, the SeaDo Explorer Pro has a bunch of cool features and a number of industry firsts, including a debris removal system activated by the touch of a button, easy access front storage compartment, and an industry-first windscreen which is designed to unclip if it is struck by the rider and simply clicks back into place afterwards. It's also the first jet ski in this segment with height and reach adjustable handlebars. We clocked up more than 1,000 kilometres or 600 miles over 30 hours during our test of this machine. If you think it looks familiar, you'd be right. The platform and rear deck extension are based on the Sea-Doo Fish Pro introduced in 2019, which in turn was based on Sea-Doo's new generation ST3 hull introduced in late 2017 as a 2018 model year. So the platform for the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro 170 is six years old, but it's a new model for 2023 because no one has manufactured a jet ski like this before. Unique features include an extended rear deck, which creates a platform for a range of clever accessories such as fuel storage, a large cooler box, and waterproof cargo bags. Depending on the configuration, with the extended rear deck and the new detachable cargo platform, you can attach up to five of SeaDoo's 15 litre, or four US gallon, fuel caddies. When you include the standard 70 litre fuel tank in the nose, plus a maximum of five 15 litre fuel bladders on the back, you can more than double the fuel capacity to a total of 145 litres. In US measurements, that's an 18.5 US gallon fuel tank in the nose, plus up to five examples of the four gallon fuel bladders on the back for a total capacity of 38.5 US gallons. In our experience, that would deliver a total riding range of more than 300 kilometres or about 190 miles, depending on your cruising speed and water conditions. Even without the extra fuel on board, the SeaDoo Explorer Pro's standard 70 litre or 18.5 US gallon fuel tank delivers a cruising range of 140 to 150 kilometres or 85 to 95 miles, depending on conditions. Of course, most jet ski riders rarely cover these distances on a day out. Other unique features? The Explorer Pro is the only jet ski on sale today with height and tilt adjustable steering, the only one with a windshield, and the only one with external rails on the bow to create additional dock tie points. These handy features are in addition to SeaDoo's 7.8 inch digital VIP instrument display, standard in Australia but optional in the US, the top end factory fitted 7 inch Garmin touchscreen navigation system, the same unit installed on the flagship SeaDoo Fish Pro Trophy, scuff guards along the edges of the deck, rear boarding rail, a flat rear seat cushion so it's easy to spin around to access the storage area on the rear deck, knee pads on the centre console and SeaDoo's highly regarded audio system which is standard in Australia but optional in the US and can now be controlled via buttons on the handlebars as well as buttons on the left speaker. SeaDoo's unique and industry first reversed thrust debris removal system called IDF is also standard and proved to be a handy feature during our test ride. While the first batch of SeaDoo IDF technology introduced two years ago had some gremlins, a number of significant hardware changes and improvements since then 
have made this system not only more robust, but a competitive advantage. For now, rival jet ski brands don't have any type of automated debris removal system. We needed to activate Sudo's IDF technology several times during our long range test of the Explorer Pro, and each time it got the job done in less than a minute. This particular footage shows a complete debris removal cycle from start to finish. Powering the Explorer Pro is Sea-Doo's 1630cc three-cylinder Rotax engine with an output of 170 horsepower. For now, there's no supercharged option on the Explorer or Fish Pro models because fuel range is a key criteria for buyers of these watercraft. In our testing, the 1630cc non-supercharged Rotax three-cylinder is the most fuel-efficient craft in the full-size three-seater jet ski segment. Compared to the closest non-supercharged rivals, the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro and Fish Pro use about 10% less fuel than the Yamaha FXHO 1.8 litre four-cylinder and about 15% less fuel than the Kawasaki Ultra 1.5 litre four-cylinder in previous tests by Watercraft Zone. Despite its fuel efficiency, Sea-Doo's 1630cc non-supercharged engine is still perky enough delivering a top speed of close to 90 kilometers an hour or 55 miles per hour in ideal conditions and good acceleration once you activate sport mode. Speaking of top speed, Sea-Doo uses GPS to accurately measure the speed of the craft. Other older rival watercraft previously used speedo wheels in the ride plate or speed estimates based on engine revs. A GPS based speedo means you're getting more accurate trip data and distance to empty estimates. In Australia, pricing for the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro starts from $28,000 excluding trailer and registration, which is $2,000 less than the Sea-Doo Fish Pro Trophy as this video was published. In the US, the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro was listed from $16,799 plus taxes, trailer and registration, and excluding the sound system and VIP digital dash, which are sold there as a package but are standard in Australia. In round numbers, in Australia, once trailer and registration fees are included, you're looking at about $31,000 to tow away a Sea-Doo Explorer Pro. Service intervals are 12 months or 100 hours, whichever comes first, and dealers we canvassed said routine maintenance typically costs about $550, depending on what's required beyond oil, filter and spark plug changes. In Australia, the standard Sea-Doo warranty is two years, versus five-year coverage for Kawasaki jet skis. Yamaha Wave Runners have two plus one-year warranty coverage in Australia, the third year only applying to Yamaha Wave Runners serviced within the dealer network. Sea-Doo Australia occasionally offers three-year warranty coverage during special promotions, so be sure to check. In addition to a long-distance on-water test completed over a weekend, after borrowing a demonstrator model from Beaches Sea-Doo in Sydney, Australia, we also covered more than 800 kilometres or 500 miles of ocean riding on the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro during a charity ride. The annual Variety Jet Trek sees almost 100 jet skis cover some of Australia's most remote coastline over a week-long ocean adventure. Some legs covered more than 200 kilometres or in excess of 120 miles in a single day. Loaded with a full tank and two 15-litre fuel caddies on the back, top speed was about 85 kilometres an hour or 53 miles an hour and fuel efficiency worked out to be about 45 litres per 100 kilometres, which previous test data shows is about 10% less than a Yamaha FXHO Wave Runner and about 15% less than a Kawasaki Ultra LX in similar conditions. As with other Sea-Doo ST3 based models, the Explorer Pro feels best when the main fuel tank is full, as the extra weight over the nose is better at cutting through the chop. As the fuel load gets lighter, the concave design of the bow has a tendency to get pushed around by cross chop. It means when the fuel load is light, you often don't know which way the nose will pivot. Lowering the trim helps combat bow hunt to an extent, but it's advisable to top up the main fuel tank wherever possible during ocean riding. In flat water, such as lakes and rivers, bow hunt is a non-issue. Mild wind chop also doesn't upset the nose too much in these conditions. But when the going gets rough, 
you'll want to hang onto the handlebars. The tilt and height adjustment is a game changer, especially for taller riders. Although it can take a while to feel comfortable standing while riding a sit-down jet ski, it's much easier on your body and lower back in rough water. It's worth noting you may want to consider changing hand grips to a simpler design than what comes standard, as we did. The more pronounced hand grips that come with the Explorer Pro tend to push your thumbs up close to the plastic shrouds on the handlebars, and that can lead to blisters, even when wearing gloves. In addition to fitting simpler hand grips from the high-performance Zidu RX PX300, we fitted motocross neoprene rings near the plastic shrouds. What worked best for us, however, was learning to adapt to keep a wider grip and making sure your thumbs are away from the plastic shrouds. The windscreen works well at minimising water spray and it's so effective at blocking the breeze it can get too hot if you're sitting down on a summer ride. A flap that opens and closes enables you to let more or less air flow through. Riding while sitting down and with the air flap closed the windscreen is so effective you can even wear a wide brim sun protection hat at modest speeds without it blowing off. Riding when standing, the shape of the windscreen diverts air into your face and chest to keep you cool. The screen does a good job of deflecting modest water spray, but frankly the concave shape of the bow is the main reason the ST3 hull is a drier ride than most other jet skis. As with other ST3 based Sea-Doo models, there is plenty of foot room in the footwell and the narrow seat design means your legs aren't chafing against the engine housing. It's worth noting the Sea-Doo footwells can fill with water when you come to a quick stop, so you may need to give the throttle a blast to empty the footwells so you have better stability when idling. When washing the jet ski after your ride, it's advisable to use a wet vacuum or a water extraction hose to empty the footwells. The Sea-Doo audio system works well and has more volume and bass than the audio systems on Yamaha and Kawasaki models we've tested. The VIP digital dash is not a touchscreen. At the moment, only the Yamaha FX Wave Runner series has touchscreens but you can control music and maps on the Sea-Doo via buttons on the handlebar shrouds once you connect your phone to the BRP Go smartphone app. Although the glove box pocket is smaller than most other full-size three-seat jet skis, it has a waterproof container with a USB charging port and a foam divider to stop your phone bouncing around. The Garmin touchscreen has vital signs for navigation, trip information, water temperature, and other data from current and previous rides. You can also load GPX codes via a smartphone app or enter route coordinates manually. The Garmin system comes with basic map coverage, but you can add detailed maps via a micro SD card or by downloading them into the device once it's connected to your smartphone. One of the biggest advantages of the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro and all other ST3 base models, such as the Fish Pro and GTX models, is the easy access to the main storage compartment. The handlebars and the entire console lid lift up once two tabs are released. Although the Sea-Doo's bow storage is not as big as its rivals at 96 litres, or 25.3 US gallons, versus 130 litres or 34.3 US gallons in the nose of the Yamaha FX and 124 litres or 32.7 US gallons in the nose of the new Kawasaki Ultra series, it is more user friendly than any other jet ski on the market because you don't have to lean over the handlebars. A mesh pocket divider is an optional extra, check the cost of this accessory with your local dealer. It's super handy to store water bottles or a spare set of goggles and gloves. The underside of the console lid has plastic straps for an emergency beacon and a fire extinguisher, should you prefer to carry those safety items. The bow storage area is limited to a load capacity of 13 kilograms or 20 pounds, which is enough for a small anchor or some tow rope, though we recommend putting these in padded carry bags to stop them banging around. 
Other details worth highlighting, the IDF reversed thrust debris removal system is easier to use than we expected. Just push the button on the left handlebar and follow the instructions on the dash. The whole process takes less than a minute from start to finish. If possible, make sure you have some room behind the craft because it moves backwards slowly during the process. Also make sure the craft is at least waist deep in water so you don't pick up more debris. We used IDF to clear seaweed, reeds and some sand grit in shallow water. We were previously sceptical about this technology, but now we believe it's a genuine competitive advantage for Sea-Doo that the others don't have. And it adds enormously to peace of mind when you're in the middle of nowhere. It means debris isn't going to ruin a good day out in the water. As for carbon seal issues, those problems were solved years ago after a supplier change. We've now clocked up more than 2,000 kilometres and 60 hours in ST3-based Sea-Doo models and never had a carbon seal fault. It's worth noting the carbon seal and the wear rings are maintenance items and need to be checked for movement or wear by an expert during routine maintenance. To sum up, here are the good and bad points about the 2023 Sea-Doo Explorer Pro 170 in our opinion. The windscreen helps deliver a drier ride than any other personal watercraft on sale today. The unique height and tilt adjustment of the handlebars makes it easy to find the most comfortable riding position whether you're sitting or standing. The rails on the bow provide more options for dock tie points in addition to four other points elsewhere on the craft and they're also handy to grab onto when manoeuvring the ski on the trailer by hand. Having more link accessory platform options means you can carry more cargo and fuel to take you further. The IDF reverse thrust system delivers peace of mind should the intake grate get clogged by seaweed, a plastic bag or other debris in the middle of nowhere. Fuel economy is good for a full-size three-seat personal watercraft. The easy access bow storage area and the waterproof smartphone charging pocket in the console are genius. And the sound system is awesome. The touchscreen Garmin navigation unit is much easier to use than the cheaper touchpad versions. And the rear boarding step and large rear deck make it easy to reboard from the water. Downsides? As soon as the main fuel tank dips below two thirds full, the bow starts to get pushed around in big swell and large cross chop. And this gets worse as the nose gets lighter, even when the adjustable trim is lowered. In flat water, bow hunt is a non-issue, though you may notice the steering and manoeuvring are vague below 20 kilometers an hour, or 12 miles an hour, which is another trait of the ST3 hull. The windscreen rubs slightly on the navigation shroud. We added some gaff tape to protect it. You need a wet vacuum or a water extraction hose attachment to empty the footwells once you've washed the ski after a ride. And the refueling nozzle on the optional fuel caddies can be finicky, so consider a small portable battery powered pump or carry a jiggle hose or a jiggle siphon. On balance, the 2023 Sea-Doo Explorer Pro 170 is a game changer. Although some hardcore jet ski enthusiasts may not appreciate its many innovations, the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro has created a new niche and will no doubt bring new people to the sport. Watercraft Zone would like to thank Beaches Sea-Doo and Can-Am in Sydney, Australia for providing this example of the 2023 Sea-Doo Explorer Pro 170 for independent review. Full disclosure, Sea-Doo did not pay for this review and this is not sponsored content. We tested this craft over a fortnight in late February and early March 2023. To find out more details on the Sea-Doo Explorer Pro 170, as well as similar models from Yamaha and Kawasaki, go to watercraftzone.com.au. Please hit like if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future updates. 
and to help us grow our jet ski community. Thanks for watching.